since it's getting kind of whatever and whatever, let's do this. Let's talk about the climate Pluto along with the people who are writing um, Power Rangers Beast Morphers. I think we're going to just do a few episodes because they're not even here and also talk about the whole people who reviewed it. Okay, so let's look at this. Hmm. Amazing that in all of this, and the parent of doing like just seven. Oh, they don't have the count of how many people in the audience, how many audiences was. But apparently, for right now, as I'm recording this, we're doing seven of them. One hasn't got the viewer count yet. But apparently, episode four is the one to beat with almost half a million. Well, actually, just half a million. Half a million viewers. And some of them didn't come less. And apparently the episode one to start off the new in quotation season, it was just 39. Oh, wait, sorry. That means that this was half a billion. Oh, OK, so half a. Yeah, so half a billion in episode four. And then that means 39 million for the first episode, which, of course, again, you can see this kind of messed up. It's like it was doing pretty good. And then it looks like just by looking at it, it's like, OK, so. They didn't know the first, the episode came the episodes came back. You dumbass idiots! It's like always, like you do this, you stupid. And then, forty six million views, forty six million views, fifty million views. Then you had to gone for two weeks, and it went to thirty three million views. And of course, the last one, as we can see, it climbed up a little a bit again, where it's now forty million views, which basically just means this part. You should you should make sure you say it's coming. And you should not have a freaking damn <laughs> hiatus, which I bet most likely was because of kids choice words and all this bullshit. But I'm just saying you shouldn't really want to have this messed up crap of where it's like, oh, well, look at that. Lo and behold. So anyways, let's get to the writers, shall we? The real reason why I'm making this. So believe it or not, episode 23. It was, of course, a Kai Clement Kluo. They were the ones who wrote it. There was no one else in there. And it looks like Becky, a.k.a. Cat Lady, she was in charge in this episode. And in the second episode, Save Our Shores, it was Alwyn, a.k.a. Owlboy. He's the one that actually took hold of this. game of this. And then in Game On, it was Becky, Becca again, a.k.a. Cat Lady, who took the holds. And then in the fourth one, it was Owlboy. And then we get to episode five where it's like, here's a new person. Was it a new person? I don't even remember if she was a new person. I think she was also a part of the original fourth episode. Let me just check. Hmm. Let me just check right quick. Staff writer. Oh, that's her. Yeah. Okay. I remember her. Yeah. She was in the fourth episode. Yeah. She was. Oh, she did our real monsters. So basically she might actually be a call in for Nickelodeon themselves. What? It's like, so Nickelodeon does have writers that they can call any chance. Yeah. But considering how it is. <laughs> ooh, ooh, and of course, you know, this laptop's a complete idiot moron. So I can't really look at more stuff, but I'm pretty sure she actually did do episode four. I'll cite that later. Then we do the blame game. Yeah, so blame game, that's number six, a.k.a. Um, 28. And Johnny Hartman came back to rings. Yeah, so he actually has the rings again. And let's see. Of course, Owlboy and Cat Lady are a part of this, too. But he actually is the one that took hold of this. Okay. Let me try to remember how blame game goes. Hmm, blame game. Oh, yeah, they, they, it almost stuck the landing. It almost stuck the landing, which means that Johnny is doing good, but he needs to tell them hell no on the whole funny end part. It's like, this is a good time for him to put his foot down and say hell no. I don't think he has that power, though. And then for episode 29 and episode 30, which episode 30 is going to come next week. Oh, sorry. It's going to come in two weeks. Oh, son of a... Don't freaking damn pause it. If you pause it and make it two weeks, it, uh, if your ship counts because you dumbasses won't freaking advertise it. It's like, yeah, Nickelodeon, here's how it goes. If you're going to pause shit... <laughs> sorry to be a jerk. It's like, if you're going to 
skip it for two weeks. That means that frick you, they shouldn't have to ask for promos to make sure people know it's going to come back this Saturday. It's like, you're the one who thought of this shit. You're the one who's like, oh yeah, we're going to skip two. We'll skip it a week. And it's like, you're the freaking dumbass here. So you're going to have to be like, okay, well, we're going to have free promos for Friday. It's like, yeah, put it on Friday. And there we go, you know? So it's kind of stupid. But anyways, so we got Beast King Rampage, which we got Tommy Furnace. Furnace, he's the newest person in the freaking ranks. And here's what I got to read about this guy. So apparently he actually is two years older than me and he's a New Zealand comedian. Yes, he's a New Zealand comedian. Yeah. He grew up in Mount something. He studied screen and media studies at University of W in early 2010s. He selected to be a finalist in Raw Comedy Quest 2011 New Zealand International Comedy Festival. Tom performed alongside John Carr in his debut show, Cold Duck and Tomo Gotchis. In 2011, his team Grand Chiva Productions won the 24 I mean, 28 hours filming com competition with their mockery about jumping guys who jump over children. Some of them. <laughs> He's currently prepping for the Christchurch Classic Bodybuilding Competition, which is an annual event for up and coming athletes. Well, well, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> my gosh i feel like freaking deadpool sonic teenage warhead motherfucker what the fuck big long name what the shit <laughs> it's like okay what the fuck is this so he's a comedian but he also has some experience in writing and media but apparently he's also supposed to be right now of course we don't really know this guy's kind of not really well known. He doesn't have a picture on his wiki page. Apparently, he's an athlete, but so that means that he's kind of stacked. It's like, holy frick, he's a buff dude. What the fuck? <laughs> like, what are you doing over here with these two dumbass idiots? It's like, dude, what the frick? <laughs> yeah, but apparently, he might be the reason why some messed up craziness it's like he allows them to do whatever the hell they want to you know, i claim it clue he allows them to do whatever the fuck he wants they want and it's like oh son of a let me just read the next one steel learns that nate and zoe have feelings for each other and tries to bring them together despite the strict battle grid battle force rules that forbid relationships between rangers mm, damn and of course tom is a part of this too <laughs> so folks Apparently, when it comes to the, it's like he's gonna try to bring them together too. It's like, oh god, okay, never mind. I don't want to even watch this episode if it's like you're gonna get a dude as a comedian and he's known as a freaking damn comedian. Oh hell no! <laughs> I'm sorry, but oh hell no! Oh no! Oh no! Let me check right quick. I think. Oh okay, so we have basically two people who are directing this. Simon Bennett, who's gonna take the rings now. It's like he's gonna take the rings because um our beloved crap, what was his name? Damn, I just forgot his name. But anyways, the previous person who's had the rings, he left. He wanted to leave, but they kept him one more time for the season one or part one of Beast Morphers. But he's able to finally leave and he's like, peace, I'm out, see ya. Because <laughs> unless you're gonna actually do good you're not going to get him back. <laughs> it's like, unless you're doing good, you're not going to get him back. You got to make him excited for this. And the writers here, what the fuck, man? Unless this is going to be a freaking story at the very end where it's like after they took the rings of Ninja Steel, son of a big, and then they, they have Beast Morphers. Now, hopefully by this third whatever, they'll shake off this bullshit and they actually show that they can really write. That's like... Are, were they trying to find their footing in things? And hopefully the third time's a charm where they actually do good. Should I actually be optimistic and think this is actually an underdog story of where it's like, 
two interns all of a sudden have rings for the whole entire franchise and the whole entire season and they have to actually figure out how to actually manage this shit and it's like the first attempt was horrible as shit and the second attempt is getting a little bit better but still they're doing some of the same old shit a little bit and it's like the third one they shed off their wings and now they're able to freaking soar and show that they can really story tell I don't freaking know. I don't think that's the story we got here. I think it's more the fact of we're freaking screwed. <laughs> we're still screwed, man. It's like we're still screwed. Hopefully, Simon actually is not liking these two and he's going to fire their ass. That's the only way how that works. Fire their ass, get serious writers, maybe bring back some writers from Time Force or wild force heck even some of the disney era i think they might be good just like no no operation overdrive rpm hell yes somewhat mystic force spd that's kind of a hell yes it's like yeah it's like you need to actually find people who are veterans who know i could tell who can actually tell the story good like frick even how about you look for the mystic knights people the writers for mystic knights which most likely are also the ones who wrote for power rangers 2 not sure it's like maybe give them a chance give them a shot to continue on because they got screwed over it's like wow they were gonna get season three and then they got fired it's like what the frick or they got they lost half their paycheck <laughs> not sure the other one is of course oliver driver so we have two people who are very constant when it comes to directing which is not bad that's good i'm glad there's like at least two directors and we're not going like we need to find a new director bam Oh, he only stayed for two episodes. We need to find a new director. Bam. He only stays for three. We need to find a new director. Bam. He stayed for one. Oh, crap. Son of a... We need to find a new director. It's like, it's not like that. It's just these two who are going back and forth. And I bet directors actually have final say in what's in the thing and what's not. But I'm pretty sure still the Kyclamic Cluo still has sway. And whatever they freaking damn do, whatever they put in the damn script, it just happens because they don't really have time, even though they're only filming 22 episodes versus 40 to 50. So it's like, yeah, sadly, you can't really say that they don't have time to edit it because they have, of course, just 22 episodes compared to 40 or 50 yeah now you really get screwed over because now you can't really say that oh we didn't have the time yes you fucking damn did yes you fucking damn did this is not the normal power in your sway instead this is nickelodeon being a dumbass way <laughs> along with bandai america too along with their sorry asses which they're gone thank goodness but it's like you could easily been modified it it's like you could easily been modified because it's 22 damn episodes if it's 40 or 50 and you have to go like okay that makes sense but this, this is not it this is not it it's not how it goes okay well, anyways <sighs> we'll have to hope we'll have to hope here it's not gonna really wreck this shit <laughs> because this first one <laughs> and now we're gonna have one where steel is gonna try to bring nate and zoe together i i hear hijinks I hear freaking hijinks. The only thing is that will they actually do the steel charm, which was is pretty funny and clever, or will they actually go in the fact of the Ben and Betty Clyclamic Cluo bull crap? Which is like, I don't know, and I really hope that Ben and Betty isn't gonna be a part of this shit either, but it most likely will have something to play in a freaking episode, but it's most likely hopefully not gonna be helping Steel. Hell no. <laughs> That's a big hell no. <laughs> no thank you.